Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's part three of my back to front playthrough of The Doolittle Raid by Jeremy White and published by GMT Games. In the last video, we went through the flight turn. Now, part three, the naval turn. Just one clarification before we get going. In the last video, if you saw it, our flights were heading towards their landing zones and we had a severe headwind. And I said, well, we can't land there because looking on the wind effects charts for severe headwind, it says may not move or acquire target, pass guzzle check or consume one fuel. So I thought, well, no chance of landing there. But of course, as it was pointed out to me, and thank you very much for that, I forgot about this, the move phase, where you can move or acquire a landing zone or target without hindrance. So during the move phase, we could have tried to land in one of the Chinese landing zones. Still means though that uh, for this severe headwind in the wind phase, we would have to pass a guzzle check and if we didn't do that, use fuel. So there's still a danger of the B-25s running out of fuel. But once again, thank you for pointing that out. That helped me and uh, I dare say others who play or are interested in this game. Right, the naval turn. Here's the naval map we'll be using and we're doing scenario nine, the Doolittle Raid. Alameda, 0500 hours, April 2nd, 1942. So, let's get that set up. Here's the carrier deck. And for this scenario, there's going to be 16 B-25s. So that's the B-25s, complete with their elite crew. But of course, we can't see what their special skills are. There we go. Naval turn counter goes at the top here. If we get to the bottom, that's the end of the naval turn. And if we haven't launched our B-25s, that's game over. For the scenario, the planned launch point of our B-25s is here. So the task force has got to get all the way across here and hopefully launch the B-25s because we cannot launch them before this zone here. Because that zone represents the first zone on the flight map. So that's uh, a little bit nearer. So fingers crossed. Our task force is represented by this counter and that starts up here in San Francisco. Alameda, and our task force consists of the Hornet, of course, and that goes here, and this, which is an oiler, a refueler. And this will become significant. There's a little S by it, which means it's a slow ship. Here's the rest of the task force. And its job is to protect the Hornet. And the scenario says that these three, which got a couple of destroyers and a heavy cruiser, can go in any port space down here. And one of the rules says that you cannot jam in loads of ships. They've got to fit without overlapping any of the uh, lines here in the space. So I'll put that there. This could go here. We can't cover everything. We haven't got enough ships in this task force. We have to wait until we rendezvous with the Enterprise. And these can go in any starboard 
spaces. So again, we've got a couple of destroyers and a light cruiser there. So we're covered a little bit, but you know, there we go. The planned rendezvous point to meet up, hopefully with the Enterprise and its task force is at Midway. And the turn we hope to do it is here. We get bonuses to uh, our rendezvous dice throws if we uh, achieve that. Also with the Task Force 18, we've got a recon plane. And uh, the scenario says to place it here. When we start the turns, first thing I'm going to do is move that out the way to local recon, you'll see why later. Something I didn't realize until now is there are a couple of phase markers for the flight map and this naval map. So use those if you wish. And that goes in the flight one up there, if you can see. In this scenario, there are also a couple of submarines. And they are, at the moment, out of contact, and they go down here. Let's put them there. There we go. Last thing to do is to set up the security track. The alert level for this scenario is zero, and our security risk is 14. The security value, remember that's the amount of dice we can throw when we have to do a security check, is still five. And for this scenario, we haven't actually failed any secrecy tests yet, so there we are. One last thing, just like the flight map, there are hazards, if you can see that. And there are three types, east, central, and west hazards, and you pop those in little pots. Also, not very clear to me anyway, but probably to everybody else, was that you also have to get these transit hazards ready, because in some situations you'll need those as well. So they go in another pot. As always, you'll need one of the great player aids supplied by the game. This time it's the naval one which will give you the sequence of play, everything else you need, including the hazards and launching and all that sort of thing. But as before, I would highly recommend you read through the rules for this naval turn, because as I said last time, the player aids are fantastic, but they tend to summarize. So uh, if you want detail, get your head in the rules. Right, I think we're ready to start. So here we go with the first turn. Let's hope we don't make too many mistakes. So looking on the naval turn sequence of play, we can see the first thing is general quarters. And that basically means we can rearrange the task force if we wish. We can move the recon, which we're going to do. I'm gonna put this here into local recon. The reason I'm doing that and bear in mind, I'm no expert on the subtleties of this game yet, is that when hazards are drawn, you have to distribute them evenly. So when we do draw hazards, this can then take one or more hazards, and that may well uh, deflect an airstrike. So uh, that's my thinking behind it anyway. Also, any submarines we can try and make contact with, or indeed break contact with them. And if there's any mechanical distress on any of the ships, we can try and remove that. But at the moment, nothing. So, next is weather. So any weather markers on the map are removed, but of course there aren't any yet. And we now make a weather check to see what the weather is in this zone. And just like in the flight map, there are common zones that are controlled by one 
table if you like and for these two the weather check table is here and what we're going to do is throw two dice and check what the uh, weather is. Let's pop that there, try not to destroy everything. It's two dice, right. Eight. That's gusty. There we are, gusty. Whoops. So next would be launch, but we're too far away, so no launch yet. And now it's underway, which is where we move. Normally when we want to move our task force, we have to throw once again on this table here. And depending on the weather, we are given a number that we have to throw, or better, for us to move. But for the first turn, we don't have to do that and we can move straight away from port into the Pacific coast, we're off. There are a couple of other moves you can do with this. One is called a force move, where you can force the task force to move, but you can only do that if you fail the underway check, which is this thing on the table here. The other thing you can do is something called a raid move, but you can only do that if you're past this red international date line and it has already moved and there are no slow ships in the task force but we've got one if you remember here so raid moves are out unless we send this one back to port we can also do something called a rendezvous check and if successful we have indeed rendezvoused with the Enterprise and its task force. And you can do that twice in the underway phase, once before you move and once afterwards. So why didn't I do that? Well, up here is a rendezvous number you have to throw or better to be successful. And the rendezvous number in this zone is 15 plus. Now on two dice, that's gonna be quite a difficult thing to do. There are, of course, some modifiers and things, some positive, some negative, but there's no point doing it at the moment. And besides, if you fail, your security risk goes up by one. So we won't bother. Next, hazards. And again, just like the flight map, they are printed here, and it says, East hazards one, plus one if failed secrecy test. Well, we haven't actually failed a secrecy test yet. So one hazard from the east pot, which is here. And once again, you draw it face down so you can't see it. And if there was more than one, we draw them first before revealing them. But it's, as it's the only one we've got, oh, Right. And looking on the old uh, hazard chart of the player's aid, we can see it is an enemy signal. And I'm not sure if you saw that, but this one has got a little icon on it, a little triangle with a red dot in it. And these are actually on the map over here. So the fact it's there means we have to do a secrecy test, but there are no additional effects afterwards. So secrecy test, we'll pop it here. We can throw five dice, remember? And our security risk at the moment is 14. So we've got to throw 14 or more with five dice. Let me just move that there. Right, here we go. Oh, that was a four, but yes, 12, yeah, lots. I think that's the first secrecy test we've done. If we had failed, we would have to increase the security risk by one and move the failed secrecy test up one as well. If you remember, that's the counter that drags the alert level along with it. However, even though we've passed, 
we still have to increase the security risk by one. So we're now up to 15. I'm just moving that on the little table there. And that is the hazard phase. This stays on there. And if there are two of these in the same sea area or zone, it increases the security risk by three. If you get three in the same area, it increases it by another three. Also, if you get three signal hazards in adjacent sea areas, that will decrease your secrecy value, i.e. the number of dice you throw for the check, by one, and each subsequent adjacent area will decrease it by further one die. So these are quite nasty. Also, they affect the amount of hazards that you have to pick in certain sea areas or zones, like for here, enemy signal hazards on the map. None, of course, we don't draw any additional hazards, but if we've got one or more, we have to draw a, a, a plus one hazard. So there you go, nasty things. But that's the end of the hazard phase. Next, refueling. So if we'd have done a forced move, that means that we would turn it over and be low on fuel. And this is the part of the turn where we would try and refuel with our oiler. But we didn't, so that's okay. And that is the end of the turn. So we move that. And we do it again. And I haven't been moving the phase counter, I tend to forget. And using the player aid for that turn you're doing makes it easy anyway. So we're off for the next turn. So here we go with the next turn and it is general quarters. And my uh, only quandary at the moment is because now we have an enemy signal here. When we move into this area, we're gonna be drawing three hazards. So what I might do is bring this back out from the local recon, because while it's here, hazards can't be attached to it. But if I bring it into the area, I can sort of spread the hazards out a bit. We may lose that, of course, but um, what do you reckon? Yeah, let's move it out and put it here. So this will now move with the task force and uh, the hazards we draw. If we move into that area, we can uh, spread out. Okay, submarines aren't contacted. There's no mechanical distress. So we move on to the weather phase. I'll try and remember to use the little phase marker this time. <laughs> so we take this back and we now re-roll for the weather. So as before, we'll be using this chart here. Five. Five is calm. There we are. No launch. So we're now underway. So of course we want to move into here. And to do that, we look on this table again. It's calm, so we need to throw five or more with two dice. Here we go. Oh, I thought that wasn't gonna do it there. Yes, there's eight. We can now move into here. And in comes the recon as well. Hazards. So as it says on here, two, oh, before we do that, we've got to throw to see what the weather is. And it's still under the control of this table here. Yes, don't forget that every time you move into a new area, even though we've gone past the weather phase, so to speak, if there isn't a weather counter in that area, you have to uh, throw and see what it is. So. 10, that's Gale. Once again, I didn't bother to do the rendezvous.
because it's 14 plus to roll successfully and we're only going to get a plus one for the recon and throw two dice so uh, not much of a chance okay hazards two plus another one for this enemy signal so here we go One, two, three. Now we have to, just move this up here, I think. We have to distribute them equally. So one here, one here, and we'll put the other one here. See what I mean? You can uh, take the pressure off the task force by doing that. Unfortunately, it may end up being destroyed. I didn't really want to bring it out this early because the hazards start getting a bit bonkers as you move up nearer to Japan, but we'll see. So let's do this one first. Whoops. Oh, crikey. It's this. It's a mechanical distress. Normally they go on individual ships, but that particular one gets attached to the task force. And as you can see, it's got a minus three there. And even though the recon revealed it, it's placed on the task force and provides an adverse die roll modifier to the next rendezvous attempt. So it stays on there until we make a rendezvous attempt and then it's removed and it cannot be removed with the general quarters. So that's stuck on there, great. Uh, yes, this one. Clouds, that's actually nothing. We want some more of them. Now the one on the task force. Oh. Medals. That would be attached to one of the B-25s. And uh, there's a story behind this. I think uh, Japan invited uh, American dignitaries over before World War II, sort of peace pact, and the Japanese issued medals to commemorate it. And when uh, Doolittle set off for this raid, at the ceremony for it, he attached his medal to one of the bombs. <laughs> he was returning it. Doesn't do much at the moment, but during a flight or attack turn, the medal allows that B-25 to make a re-roll and then it's discarded. So for now, we'll just pop it on. Holstrom, he hasn't got anything. Right, there we go. So that's the hazards phase. Next is refueling, but we're still fueled up. So that's the end of the turn. And we move down. Got two more turns. I think we get a plus three to our die roll if we roll a rendezvous on that turn. So, here we go again with the general quarters. Normally, you would be able to attempt to get rid of mechanical distress counters, but in this case, it's the one attached to the task force, so that stays there until we make a rendezvous check, which we may do this turn, just get rid of it. Weather. Okay, we can remove these and see what the new weather is in this area. So back it comes. Ten again. Gale. Oh dear. Launch. No. Underway. Okay. I think we'll move, or attempt to move, and then do a rendezvous check, because it's one less. We can get rid of this blooming thing then. So, we are Gale, so we need a seven plus. Oh, <laughs> lovely, good. So this moves into here, as does this. 
and we now have to check for the weather but we're in a new zone which I've covered up there we are so I'll try and put that on the screen so you can see it let's see what we get nine Gale, not doing too well with the weather. That goes on there, yeah, I forgot to do this underway. <laughs> so now, hazards. Oh no, what I'm going to do, move that back, is try re uh, rendezvous check. So, it says up here, 13 plus. I don't think we're gonna have much chance, but we can get rid of this thing. We're gonna throw two dice. We need to get 13 or more, but are there any modifiers that will help us? We get a plus one for the recon. And there's another thing you can do as well, which I forgot to tell you about, something called break radio silence. We can roll the die, and if we don't make the rendezvous total, we can break radio silence and add up to plus five to that die roll to make it a success. But unfortunately, the amount you added on gets uh, added on to your security risk. But that's worth bearing in mind if we don't have much luck when we get to the rendezvous point. But I think that's it, just one for the recon. We're not going to do it, are we? Because we've got a minus three. But let's throw anyway, just for the heck of it. Six <laughs> minus three is three, plus one is four. No, we didn't do it, but this is gone. And I think it goes back in the pot. But because we failed our rendezvous check, we add one to the security risk. We are now up to 16 hazards. What have we got here? East hazards, two. Only one if it's a storm. No, it's a gale. And we add another one because of this enemy signal. So once again, it's three. Once again, we're gonna add two to the recon. Right, fingers crossed. Oh, crikey, mechanical distress, which we have to uh, add to one of the ships. So I'll add it to the Meredith destroyer here. And that, oh, and that, if you can see, has a little S, red S down the bottom left, that turns that ship into a slow ship and has to go here and stays there until we can remove that during the general quarters phase. Right. Oh, another enemy signal, but this time there is no little icon down the bottom left, so we don't have to do a secrecy test, but it's another one. We're gonna put that there. And this one. Oh. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Again, no secrecy test required, but it says here, the moment the sea area has two or more signal hazards, increase the security risk by three. We're up to 19. And look, if you can see there, that's gonna add two hazards. Good grief. But that's it, refueling we don't need to do. So we're back for a new turn. And I'm about to run out of memory, so see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. But as you've just seen, did make a bit of a boo-boo in the hazards phase. This shouldn't have got the mechanical distress because the recon 
actually had it, it was assigned to that. So what happens is this goes back where it was and this is sent to the hanger. It's got CA on the back of it. So it's going to go there and it's assigned <laughs> to the recon. So we can't bring the recon back out until we get rid of that. Right. It is now general quarters. So we will try and remove this mechanical hazard. And it's got, if you could see there, a seven plus. That's the number we've got to throw with two dice. Incidentally, it's during this general quarters phase that any damaged B25s on the carrier deck can be repaired if you have an elite co-pilot crewman. So there we go. So we'll try and remove this. Two dice, we need seven or more. Oh, look at that, lovely. Right, that can't come out though until next turn. That's the problem. So next is weather. So we'll get rid of those. Move that back. That's the table we want. Two dice. Nine. Another gale again. So, oops, we're not launching. So we're straight now to underway. And for gale, we need a seven plus. Got to keep moving. Only got one more turn before our planned rendezvous. Nine, that's good enough. Whoa, lucky. So we move up to Pearl Harbor here, look, Hawaii. Move this because it's now hazards. It's the bit I was dreading. Oh, before that, keep forgetting. Quickly throw for the weather. We get a storm. We don't draw as many hazards, right. Seven, another gale. Right, there we go. Easy to forget. Okay. Hazards, here it says, east hazards still, two, one if storm, no, so it's two. Now these enemy signals, we've got three of the swines. So that's another two <laughs> hazards. So that's four hazards. Doesn't look good, does it? Just move it up there. So it's out the way. There we go, right. What is in store for us? First one. Oh, good. Clouds. Next one. Ah! Oh, clouds. Not so good. It's that thing again that gets attached. That mechanical distress that gets attached to the task force. Dagnamit. Right. Oh. And clouds, so it could have been a lot worse. Now because we've already moved, we can't get rid of this. But that's the hazards out the way. Refueling, no. So we're back to the start of the next turn. And this is the turn that has the planned rendezvous. So we've got to get into here to get the bonuses. So general quarters, we're bringing this out again. Hope this is the way we do it. Because we've got a lot of hazards again. Might not be so lucky this time. I think that's it. 
weather. So we remove these and throw for this one. I'm not sure if you're supposed to throw for these, but as we're not in them, I can't see the point. Unless I'm missing something, let me know. So once again, we've got, let's move that back down there for a second. We're going to need that for the, oh, that's got to go back there. What we got? Oh, snake eyes. Calm. Okay. We're not launching yet, so it's underway. So what I'm going to do is try a rendezvous so we can get rid of this and then hopefully move into here and do another rendezvous. So, rendezvous, it's a minus three. Let me just see. They are great, it's all on here. Look, rendezvous check. So, we're not gonna get it and our security risk is gonna go up, but we get a plus one for the old recon and that's it. Two dice. No, we needed a 12 plus. So no, we didn't get it. And we can get rid of this. But our security risk now goes up from 19 to 20. Now we're gonna try and move. And as it's calm, we need a five plus. Oh, oh, oh. only just. That was lucky. We now move in to our rendezvous. And we'll make another rendezvous attempt. Here we go again, another fade in. Merrily videoing away, not realizing that my camera had stopped recording. Just as I'm about to do the second rendezvous attempt. It's just as well because uh, I was merrily going through it and I'd forgotten once again to do a weather check. So I've put it back to where it was just before the second rendezvous check and we'll do that now. But first, the weather. So using this table, of course, we get a nine, which is a gale. Okay, rendezvous. We are in the correct area. And it's the correct turn. So some modifiers. So we get three dice for this because we're in the right area. We get a plus three because we're in the right turn. And we get another plus one because of the recon. And we need to throw an 11 or more after all the modifications. So three dice. Let's move that down a bit. Here we go. Yeah, I think we've done it. We've got plus three and plus one, so that's four. That's 14, I think. So yes, we have made the rendezvous. So we can get rid of that. And that, get off, here we are. And we replace this with this. And now we add all the other ships from that task force to the ones already on the layout. There we are, looks a bit healthier, and you'll probably set them up completely different to me. Also, we have some planes, we have another recon. I'm gonna stick that in the local recon. Some torpedo planes, put those in the hangar. Some bombers. Some fighters. 
and some scouts. As I get more experienced with this game, I'll know exactly where to put these, but for now, I'll put that in cap high and see how we go. Now, because this task force was fueled, that one is also fueled. If this was low on fuel, we'd also turn that over to low fuel as well. But we've been lucky with our underway checks. Next though, it's hazards. So we're in the central hazards now, and it says there central hazards, one plus one per patrol. So that's three, plus alert level. Luckily we're still at zero, and minus two if storm. No, it's gale. So we're gonna take three from the central cup. One for you. One for you. And I'm sorry, another one for you. Got to protect the task force. <laughs> okay, what we got? Let's do this first. It's a mechanical distress of six plus. We have to put that on one of our ships. Right, so we'll stick it on the Meredith. Oh. There we go. This. Oh my goodness. It's another enemy signal, but luckily nothing on it. Luckily for us, it's the first one in this area and there aren't any adjacent, so that doesn't affect our security risk. Okay, and this one on the task force. Oh, it's another mechanical distress. So let's just move this along because we've got to get another one in there and we'll put uh, put the fanning in there. So overall, quite lucky. And lastly, refueling, but we're okay. Incidentally, we now have two oilers, so if we do need to refuel, we get two chances. And this large number here is its refuel value that we have to throw to refuel. Right, next turn. It's general quarters. I think we'll keep everything as is. Once again, I'll probably put things in different places and do different decisions if I was more experienced. So if you're shouting at the old monitor, I apologize. Right, we've got these mechanical distresses to try and get rid of. Whoops. So for this one, we've got to throw a six or more. Yes, that's gone. So this one goes back in the cup, but the ship stays there until the next general quarters phase. This one though is a seven plus. No, that stays as is. Weather. So just pop that back so we can see this and see what we get. It's a gale again. One thing about the weather check I haven't mentioned yet, but I will now as we're getting close-ish to the launch point. When you do a weather check and you're in these sea areas, you can also do a wind check 
for the corresponding zones on the flight map. The reason for that is if you have to launch early or when you do launch, that wind will be taken into consideration for moving the flights. We haven't had any storms yet because they're not great, but um, we can remove one of these if we get a storm. But we also have to uh, take a transit hazard as well because the poor old uh, B-25s were getting tossed about on the carrier deck. So, all done. Launch, no, underway. So here we go. It is a gale and we need seven plus. No, we have failed. Our first uh, underway check has failed. So what we can do is a false move. And we can do that because we have failed our underway check and we are fueled. So we will move to this area, but now we are low on fuel. Uh, this one, Oop. I'll pop that there. Yes, they start to get smaller. That's not fair. <laughs> One more space and we can actually launch. As I said earlier, this is the earliest we can launch because that Influence West is the first space up on the old uh, flight map. It's the dreaded hazards. And for this sea area, central hazards again, one plus one per patrol. So that's three. It's the same as this one plus Alert level, no, we're zero, and minus two if a, oh, see, I've forgotten again. What a tinker. Right, before we do the hazards. Eight, Gale, hmm, right. There we are. <laughs> Let's hope I'm not the only one who keeps forgetting to do the weather checks. But no uh, damage done because now it's the hazards. And it's, as I said, one plus one per patrol. So that's three alert level zero and it's not a storm. So three again. One for you. Just making sure they're face down. One for you. And the poor old recon will get the other one. Right, I don't know what's the matter with my uh, camera on my phone, but it's telling me I'm about to run out of memory again. So sorry, it must be all the dithering I'm doing. We'll reveal those in just a moment. Right, let's see what these hazards are. Oh, it's another enemy signals, but again, luckily, no secrecy test. This one. Don't want to get another one. Oh, it's an eye boat. We have to do a secrecy test, and that little circly icon at the top right there means whoops means if you learn level three or higher resolve an airstrike no if lower there is no additional effect unless revealed on the task force in which case increase the alert level by one so i think but if i boats are revealed by the recon there's no other effect it doesn't attack the task force i think let me know again but we've got to do a secrecy test. I think the eye boats only attack if revealed on the task force itself. Right, I'll tell you what. Right, let's put it here. Five dice and our security risk is 20. Oh, crikey, right. That don't look good. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, no. So we've got to move the security risk up by one. So we are now 21 and the failed secrecy tests up by one. There we are. Now I think we've got to remember that these scenarios as well are teaching you how to do each phase. And they're done sort of in isolation separately. So they might seem a little bit straightforward. However, when you do the full scenario and start off with the planning, your alert level won't be at zero and you might not have five dice to throw. Well, so yes, I bear that in mind. However, this I think now just goes back in the pot because it's not revealed on a task force. I think, if I'm playing it wrong, let me know. So, the one on the task force though could be a problem. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> clouds. Right, we got away with it again, dear viewer. So, refueling, now this does apply because of this. I know I keep going on about them, but they're great. These player aids, and there it is, refuel. Roll two dice, compare the modified sum to the refuel number printed on an undamaged oiler, because you can't do it if they're damaged, in the task force, either the uh, Cimarron or the Sabine. You may make this attempt once per oiler each turn. So we've got two chances to do it. As I say, this uh, number here, seven for the Cimarron and six for the Sabine are the numbers we need, or more. Oh, look at that down the bottom there, minus one, if Gale, and it is. So we'll do the Sabine first. Seven minus one for the Gale is six, and that's just enough, whoops, just enough. So we've done it. If we had failed, it says here, if Gale, one ship is damaged. And you may flip the oiler to its damaged side to change this result to success. Gale storm damage still applies. Right, but we're okay. So we can change this back to fueled. And we're off again. General quarters. Did I move that down? Oh, crikey, I forgot. Okay, General Quarters, I think we'll keep planes and ships as they are. This can come back now. So we'll pop that there. But this one, we've got to make another check. Seven or more. Oh, that's, oh. Let's move that, sorry, it didn't roll, it was an 11 on this gov. So that's okay. We can get rid of that back in the pot, but it stays there until the next general quarters weather. So we get rid of these. And we roll for the weather. Here's the table. It's a four. That's calm. Okay. Launch, no. So, underway. It's calm, we need a five plus. So, put that there again. Oh, lucky, seven. So that moves in. As does that. This weather box applies to both these sea areas, but checking the old rules, it says in the defense and influence sea areas, which these are, although the defense sea area is actually two distinct sea areas, defense east and defense west make only a single weather check for both of them. Likewise, the two influence sea areas. So no, we don't do another weather check. I think that's how I read it. Okay, don't need you then. Hazards. What we got here? 
I think it's the same as this one, yeah. Central hazards one, plus one per patrol. So that's three. Alert level is still zero, and it's not a storm, so three. One. Two. Three. Here we go again. Oh, it's another one of them. So we'll bring back the Meredith. Pop that on there. Oh, good clouds. But for the task force we have, oh, Fortune is a smiling on us. Clouds. Wonderful. Refueling. No, we're okay. So, back down. And start the next turn. General quarters. Again, leaving everything as it is, but we can do this. And we need a six or more for this one. Eight, yes. Oh, come here. That one stays there though, but this one can come back and we'll pop it there. That is it, I think. Weather. Now we remove this. Throw two dice, see what it is. Seven. Oh, it's gusty now. Launch. The reason you might want to do that, of course, is an emergency launch if we get an airstrike. The Japanese have spotted us and sending all kinds of nastiness to try and stop us. Underway. It is gusty, so we need a six or more. Seven, lovely. In we go, and now we have to make a weather check. I'm getting the hang of it. Oh, right at the back it stopped. That's an eight. That's a gale, oh dear. We could do a wind check in case we have to do an emergency takeoff and we'd use the wind check from the previous player aid. So it's gale, crikey. So we throw the dice. See what we get, should we just do it just for thingy? Nine, that's not too bad. <laughs> Gale, nine, we'd get a tailwind, a severe tailwind, which we'd put in the little wind box up on the flight map, and if we had to launch, that's the wind we would be dealing with. There we are, that would go up on here and would be removed when we did the next weather check. Hazards. Oh crikey, now it's west hazards. One plus one per, oh, I've got to move him in. So it'd be one plus one per patrol, so that's three again. Plus alert level, no, minus one if storm. No, so it's a, the same amount, but it's the new hazards. It's the ones in the west pot. And another one for you. What we got? Oh! It's a flying boat. 
It says, first increase the security risk by the number of enemy signal markers on the naval map. That's five. So we're now up to 26. We then conduct a secrecy test, great. If it was revealed on the task force, roll four dice. No. If the sum is less than the number of ships on the task force layout, increase the security risk by six before the test. Oh, I see. So if we revealed that on the task force, we would throw four dice. And if that number is less than the number of ships on the task force layout here, we have to increase the security risk by six before doing the test. But no, it wasn't. So it's just a sort of standard test. We're throwing five dice. It has a little square with a red circle in it. And on the secrecy test table on the map, it says if alert level is two or higher, resolve an airstrike. Nope. If lower, treat as the circly one. And that says if alert level is three or higher, resolve an airstrike. If lower, nothing else. Right, so secrecy test five. We're at 26. <laughs> yeah, doesn't look good. Oh, 10, that's 15, no. So the failed secrecy mark goes up one, we're on two. That doesn't drag the alert level yet. And the security risk is now 27. Be right back. Another fade in, I know, but this is a long video. So this has been dealt with, this one. Oh, it's an eye boat. But luckily it was revealed by the airplane. But we've got to make another secrecy test. It's got the little circle icon. If alert level three or higher, resolve an airstrike. No. If uh, lower, nothing. Okay. We are now at 27. We're not going to do this. Oh, oh, it's a six. I'm having that. 17. Nowhere near. So we're now at 28. And the failed secrecy test goes up another one. If it goes up one more, it will drag the alert level up to level one. But I think that's it. Doesn't attack unless it's attached to the task force, I believe. And for the task force. Oh, boat and another icon. So it's going to trigger a secrecy test. Now we can try to avoid that secrecy test by either destroying the boat or evading it. We can do one or the other. And because it was revealed on the task force, we have to increase the alert level by one, which can only be avoided if we destroy the boat. So I think we're going down the destroy the boat route. So let's get the old uh, tower ready. Now to destroy the boat, we roll dice. It's a bit of a odds even thing. We can roll three dice because it was revealed on the task force. So we roll three and select one, and we're looking for even numbers. If it's odd, we fail. Here we go. Oh, a couple of evens. I'm gonna pick that one. So that's destroyed. However, it might have radioed back home before it was destroyed. So we've got to check to see if that happens. Oh no, it says in the rules, if it's destroyed by the task force, which it is, and one or two of the dice thrown to destroy it is an odd number, the boat manages to radio home before it is sunk. So the only way to avoid that is rolling three even numbers, yeah. Increase the alert level by one. Crikey, we're up to one. Because we destroyed it though, we don't have to do a secrecy test. Getting a bit exciting. Oh, forgot to move the thingy. So that's it, isn't it? Hazards, yes. Refueling, no. We're back. 
to general quarters. And all being well, we're going to launch this turn. So general quarters, we can move that back in. And that's it. Weather. Now we've got to hope for good weather. And we would remove the severe tailwind from that zone. So weather check. Well, let's just take that one off. Oh, 10, that's a gale. That's not what we want. We'll make a wind check as well for the flight map. We have Gale. It's two snake eyes. It's a headwind, but it's not severe. So that would go up on the corresponding uh, zones on the flight map. I'll just do that. We're going to get underway. We're going to launch next turn. We're down to the wire with the turns here. So it is Gale. We are here. We need a seven or more. Oh, eight. We're okay. We are in the launch space. I'll just leave that there to remind me, you know what I'm like, I'll probably, whoops, forget. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the other thing I could have done during the general quarters is to try and get into contact with those submarines. I haven't bothered because the problem is you would only do that if they're here to give you possibly some contact markers, these things, to go on your flight map to make it easier to acquire the targets. But we're not gonna go through the flight turn. We saw that in the last video. Also, if they are in contact, they will draw hazards. So uh, we'll see, maybe next turn we'll do it. So we're underway, it is now hazards. And what do we need now? West hazards, of course, two per patrol, plus one, for the alert level and minus one if a, if a storm, no. So that's four plus another one because we are at alert level one, five. If you play this, maybe it's worth bringing out another recon to sort of take some of the hazards, I don't know. So they're gonna get two each. We'll give the extra one, of course, to the recon. Crikey. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's another boat. With the square, if alert level is two or higher, no, it isn't, thankfully. If lower, treat it as a circle result, which means the alert level has to be three or higher, no. Now this time it's revealed on a recon. So we can attempt to evade or destroy it. We're gonna destroy it or try to. The security test is avoided if the boat is evaded or destroyed. And do not increase the security risk. If destroyed, it does not radio home. It can only do that if it's revealed on the task force. So destroy the boat. We've got to do that odds and evens, but we can only roll one die. So one die. We need even. Ho ho! Lovely. Goodbye. So I think that's it. We've avoided the secrecy test and we do not move up the alert level. So that's good. I just tons to go yet. 
Oh, dear, oh dear, it's clouds. This one. Another boat. Destroy. So, evens again. Ooh. We don't have to do the secrecy test. Goodness, however, what we got on the task force. Oh, it's another boat. So we'll try and destroy. We can use three. Oh, ho, ho. it is destroyed, but it manages to radio home. So our alert level is now two. which is lucky because if we had been at level two and then drawn that, it would have been an airstrike. Gets a bit bonkers up this end of the map. Oh, mechanical distress. So once again, that'll go on here. Yep. And whoa, that I think is it. Refueling, no, we're fine. Down to the last turn. Whew. So general quarters, we could try and contact those just to try and see. Also, if they're in contact, they will add a plus one to this corresponding zone on the flight map. In other words, the Japan part of the flight map. And we'll give a plus one to the acquisition as well as the contacts. So we'll try and do that. So we need a seven or more with two dice. No, <laughs> and the other one. No. So it doesn't matter, but as you can see there, when they're turned over, they've got a big plus one, which reminds you on the flight map that you get a plus one to your acquisition checks. And also if they are in contact while you're still on the naval map, at the end of the naval turn, you will get a contact counter to put on one of the uh, cities in the flight map. But bear in mind, if they are in contact, they will draw hazards. So there we go. Weather. Oh, we need good weather because we're going to launch. So we take that off. Yeah, we're still on. Still on here. Seven. Gusty. Could be worse, I suppose. There we are. And now, at long last, launch. And it is a planned launch because we are in the correct area. So a launch ends the naval turn, and then you go into the flight map. But before that, we have to see how successful the B-25s are at getting off the carrier deck. The launch phase. Here are our B-25s on the carrier deck. First thing we've got to do is organize them into flights. And each flight must have at least two B-25s and no more than four. So let's do that. I've organized the B-25s into five flights. And when you play the game, you can organize your flights to best suit your elite crewmen. I've just taken them in order and put them into the flights. I did mention uh, before this section that I didn't do a wind check for the flight map. And I think it says in the rules, the naval turn does not technically end until you launch the B-25s. And at the end of the naval turn, the wind marker is removed. But we'll do one just for the sake of completeness. 
and that's on the flight player's aid there. So, two dice. Eight. On the naval map we had Gusty, and for eight we have a severe crosswind. And that goes down there. Now we have to see if each flight launches successfully, and for that we'll be using whoop N2 at the top there. We'll cross-reference with Gusty and see if it's uh, successful or not. We'll be using the planned row across the top there. So for flight one, let's see if it's successful. Yes. So the first flight is okay. Second flight, again, six or more. Oh, yes. No, the third flight has a botched takeoff. So for a botched takeoff, the B-25s launch successfully, except for the last one off the deck. And you can choose that randomly. So let's have a look. Who's it going to be? We'll go two, four, six. Two. That's York. Something might have happened to York's plane. Let's have a look. So we're going to use the botched takeoff table. And oh, as you can see there, we get a plus one for any pilot elite crewman, which we do have. There we go. So we get a plus one. It's not damaged, so that's it. Two dice. That's a 10. And we get Navy shuts fuel valve on deck. The flight consumes one fuel. Now they start with eight for this scenario, so this flight only has seven. Oh, let's move that. That's better. I'll put that there to remind me. Next one. Six or more. No, another botched takeoff. Who botched it up? Six. McElroy. He's not an elite pilot, so he doesn't get the plus one. What's happened to him and his plane? Come on. All right, ten. Another one. They both lose a fuel for the flight. Last flight. Seven, that's okay. They made it. We did pretty okay for that. Just these two that will lose a fuel. The last thing we've got to do is to see where they're actually starting from on this map. Now they took off from Defence West, which is here. Which is here. And now we've got to see which zone they're starting their flight from. And as you can see, hopefully there's some numbers here. So if we throw a one or a two with a single die, the flights will start here. Three to six, they'll start here. Now, because it was a planned launch, we can actually throw two dice and choose one, which is very nice. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. So we're going to use the one. So our flights will start here. And so we move them out. These two, remember, I've got one less fuel. Whoops. And each flight will get eight fuel, except uh, these two, which only get seven. And there we are. We'll just move those up now. I've done them. Oh, destroying the whole thing here. There we are. Now, the amount of fuel you'll start with when you do the scenario depends what happens in the planning stage. So, uh, might not start with as many. The last thing to do is to place the flight turn marker. Now, because it was a planned launch, we can place the flight turn marker anywhere we like. However, if it was an emergency launch, on here you can see some numbers. You'd throw three dice, get the total, and look at the corresponding number on here, and that would be your start time. But as we had a planned launch, we'll take it nice and easy and put it there. And that's it, you're now ready for the flight turn. And that, dear viewer, is the end of this humongous video. <laughs> Sorry about it being so long, and apologies for the little mistakes I made, especially with the uh, mechanical distress hazards, putting them on the uh, ships instead of putting them on the recon plane. So apologies for that. And also, don't forget your weather checks <laughs> when you move into a new area. Well, if you have made it this far, I thank you. <laughs> and if you have enjoyed it, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. I know I say it and everybody else says it, but it really does help the channel. And thank you to those that have subscribed. It means a lot, thank you. Push the like button of the video, the old thumbs up, that helps too. And leave a comment and share. As I say, these scenarios are designed to get you into the game. So what happens here isn't necessarily what will happen when you play the full scenario. So there we go. One last thing, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, you can by buying the channel a coffee. Doesn't cost much. And as I always say, all the coffee is going a pot and go towards the channel being able to upload new content. If that's of interest, I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out and thank you. So this has been, eventually, part three of a playthrough of The Doolittle Raid by Jeremy White and published by GMT Games. Only one more turn to go, the planning turn, and hopefully we'll see that in the next video. So until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.